I'm Linda Powell. Welcome to the wonderful world of painting. Today we're going to be doing part one of a two-part series with a mother and her foal at sunset. So of course they're going to be in silhouette. So I've already put in an acrylic the mother and her foal and I've put black across the bottom and in acrylic again and just pulled it up as though it looks like uh, some grass growing there. And I'll put some paint over that, but uh, that's later on. So to start with, I'm going to put start in the sky. Now the sky is a beautiful yellow and pink and mauve and blue sky. So let's start. I want a little bit of um, liquid white and yellow. Just a little tiny bit of yellow because I don't want it too dark. I can always add more if I need. Yellow is a transparent color, so you have to add white to it before you apply it to the canvas so that you can opaque it a bit more. Now, I'm going to put uh, some trees in here in the distance, but I want the yellow to come down into the trees. And see, I can paint over the horses because the horses have some um, mac tack over the top of them. So I can take the mac tack off and the horses should be relatively clean. I'll just apply this to the canvas. I don't have any liquid white on this first because uh, I'm putting liquid white into the color as I go along. Now, a little bit more of liquid white, add a little bit more yellow to it, and back up to the canvas. And I'm going to put this over here in behind the horses and take it pretty well to the end, but not quite. I start with my lightest color and then go to my darker color. Yellow with the next color is going to be almost an orange shade. But before I go to the next color, I want some reflection in the water. So let's take what's left in the brush. No, I need more color. So a little bit more of what's left on here, maybe a touch more in here. There we go. And back up here, add a little bit more yellow there, and across, and maybe across there. Dab some in there. Okay, light my brush. The next color I'm going to is alizarin crimson. And I don't want it dark. This is a very strong color. So I'm going to come down here to the white and just dilute it like that. If it's too diluted, then I'll come back for some more color. Now, above the yellow, I'm going to put the alizarin crimson. I'm not going to mix it in with the yellow as yet. I just want to have this over to the end here. There. I need to add a little bit more liquid white to that because in my brush it's quite strong. Put some there. And we're going to take it right along. Now, before I go any further, I'll wipe my brush really well and I'm going to come back and just blend lightly. I don't really want it to turn orange. The subject of this is really the sky and the fact there's a couple of horses in the picture. But this is a very pretty sky so I'm going to take my time doing it. It's a beautiful sky. The students loved this when they painted it. And of course, it was a different size than my usual 16 by 20s. So uh, that was an added advantage as well. See, so just, just blend it gently. Bring it down. 
I don't want any lines. And I might add a little bit of that into the water as well. Here and there, there we go. Come back up here. There, to blend it along. This is a 12 by 24, so I kind of have to move with the canvas. There, and add a little bit down there. Okay, let's back up here and grab some pink and put it down below. And we'll move it along a little bit there and scrub off some of that. In. There we go. All right. Now we want a mauve shade. Now usually, by the time we put our blue in, we have some mauve down here as well. But I want to make sure it gets mauve. So I'm going to mix the mauve right on my canvas, my palette. So we're going to bring down a little bit of mauve. And I don't really want it mauve, I want it a shade of blue. So I'm going to bring down some blue, mauveish blue. That's better. Tone it down some with some liquid white. See, I don't always add liquid white right to my canvas. Sometimes I add it uh, or mix it on the go. Now that's quite strong. A little bit stronger than I want, but that's all right. I'm just going to spread it along and then come along here, do some more until I get it over to the end. Uh, let's add a little bit more. That's good. And we want to come up in some places and down in others. That looks good. Okay, wipe the brush really, really well. And I'm going to take some liquid white and come back in here and start to blend it. Now I'm using little circular strokes and I'm just going to blend down into the, the pinkish color and blend up and soften it. There. This is such a pretty sky. There. Come down here and up. I'm going to add some more white there. Blend it up. Some places it might be lighter and some places darker. Here, blend it down into the pink. That looks good. You can just keep working. You know, working little circular strokes. This is a bristle brush. It's about um, a three quarter. Uh, I find that in this particular case, it doesn't really work with the fan brush. There we go. Now, I think we're going to take a bit of a break. And we'll be back in just a minute. Uh, you're watching The Wonderful World of Painting on Eastlink TV. Welcome back. We're going to continue doing these clouds and blending. You don't want to see any lines in this. I continually tell the students, oh, there's a line. You have to soften that, blend it a bit more. And I'm going to put a little bit more mauve over at this end. Oops, there's a bit of a line there. There we go. Just blend that down. I 
think I have those blended pretty good. I need to come over at the end here and do a little bit more here. The, um, the painting is more of a study of how to do clouds at sunset than it is any particular thing. And the horses add a little bit of subject matter in there that looks really good. Okay, now back to my palette. We're going to now take some ultramarine blue. These are strong, strong colors. So I want to just tone that down. And let's try that, see what it looks like. Again, we want the corners darker. Well, not that dark. Well, let's put some over at the other corner too. There we go. And we can soften that. There. Okay, back to my palette here. Just adding some more liquid white to that blue to soften it down. Even though I've added quite a bit, it, you can see it's still quite strong. And when you're putting this on, you're not looking for one tone of blue. You want to allow light patches and dark patches. And that's what we're going to have. Touch more blue and lots of liquid white. Let's work over here. I tend to work back and forth on my canvas. Let's spread it around some. There we go. A bit more liquid white. Now I'm going to the corners and starting to blend those out a little bit so that they're not quite so dark. Okay, bring it in. I don't know what it is about dark corners. I think it's to keep the eye from escaping from the canvas. that looks good and leaving light patches there's light patches and dark patches a little bit more blue in there and blend that a little bit I'm going to take my time in this like I said this is part one of two because I want you to be able to I want to be able to do this sky right so that you can go in and then be able to um, get the same effect that I'm trying to get, or that I will get. I'm not trying to get it. But see how it's kind of mottly? That's what I want, that mottly shade of blue. And crisscross strokes. Go over there, pick up some color. Bring it back, a bit more blue. Work it into your brush so you don't get streaky colors. Stand back a second. Okay, that's coming along nice. Fill in all the holes. There's nothing worse than looking at a nice painting and seeing these holes where somebody didn't get the paint into the canvas. Now I'm going to soften this with my brush. I think this side's pretty well done. See the dark patches and the light patches? A bit more blue, liquid white. And let's come over here and blend little round strokes. Round strokes, crisscross, whatever works for you. And a bit more liquid white. Bring it down to meet this. Blend it in. Oh, that's nice and soft. 
That's good. Good. Now I want to put a bit darker up there. Right up here. In here. And there. Okay. Let's have a look at that. That looks pretty good. I want a little bit darker. Maybe there. Crisscross. Crisscross, crisscross, crisscross. And in here. And a little bit over here. Bring it down into the mauve. Okay, that looks good. All right. Next we're going to put in some green in here, but it's going to be a dark green. So we want to do some sap green, some black. Now, in order to tell exactly how dark it is, we take it down and put a little white in with it. And that's a nice mossy green. Maybe we'll put a bit more in with it. But I don't want it too light because of the fact this is also in silhouette. So I'm just going to tap this in here. This is the horizon line. So I don't want any streaks or little things below the horizon line. We'll just scrub it in here. Then I'll loosen it up as we get to the top of it. Get a nice straight line in. A bit more. And in here, I want to be careful of the horses. And in here, and we're going to take a break. So uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. You're watching The Wonderful World of Painting on Eastlink TV. Welcome back. Okay, let's continue with the trees in the background. They're just sort of a suggestion of background trees. There's not a lot of detail in them. They are sort of a... Um, what, a silhouette, as I was saying. Now let's press up at them and get some little doers going here. I'm just tapping lightly. There. This is more of a fine art painting. I'm just going to take my time at it and put in the details. The details are important. There. Okay, get a little bit more dark paint and some green and come over. Now, don't go straight across or make it look like little soldiers. You want to have ones that come up higher and then go down so that it uh, it's adds interest in the background. Okay, it's just dark. It's not highlighted, green and black, green and black, there we go. And up, oh, let's make that one a bit taller. There's all kinds of trees back here, 
deciduous trees, which are the ones that lose their leaves in the fall. And then you have the evergreen trees. Now, I want this light enough that you can see the baby back there. So we're going to add maybe a little bit more light to this particular spot. I'm just going to mix it in. There we go. Okay. Now let's come along a little further. Some more green and black. I might put a little few little highlights in there too. I mean, after all, there's yellow in there, pink, but if I did any highlights at all, it would be on the yellow side. Black and green, make a dark green, dark olive green. There. Okay, fill in the holes. Okay, now I'm going to wipe my brush. I want a shadow from all of these coming down into the water. There, pull it down. Now make sure you pull it straight down. Oh, guess what? I forgot to do something there. I'm going to a different brush. I want to add a little bit of blue for reflection of the sky in the water. Luckily, it's below where I have my green, or pretty well below where I have my green. And where this is already gessoed, I can pull down into that and not lose my little uh, bits of grass that are growing up there. A little bit more blue, some liquid white. And let's put that down here and blend it in here. And blend it in here. There's a little bit of blue there and then get that in there and there and in under the fold. Now let's get some more blue in here and blend it into the pink there. Oh, I'm getting there. There we go. And later, what I'll do is I'm going to be putting color in this, and that will get rid of the blue there. Now, see if I can get blended in there. There we go. That looks better. There's a line there I want to get rid of. That looks good. Okay. Now let's go back to the trees. Let's add a little bit of highlight to those trees, a little bit of the yellow. That might be just showing through here and there on the trees. A little bit more. Remember, it has to be a thinner paint to stick to a thicker paint. There we go. And now, I can see from the clock that we're almost out of time. So I want you to join us next week for part two when we'll finish up this painting. So you're watching. The Wonderful World of Painting on Eastlink TV.